Admiral of the Ooh. Vessel and the Chosen One. Let's That's talk me. some shit. Some mumbo jumbo, some tripe, and maybe even some drib, uh, yes, gibberish. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I've got some statistics for you right off the bat, Mick. Awesome, that's what I want to hear. Let's, let's have a look at our insights from uh, from last episode. Mm-hmm. Episode number two of season two from Drivel. I'm expecting wide reach. What do you reckon our most listened to country was? What podcast was this... What country was this podcast listened to most? I'm going to guess Australia. Oh, bang on the money. Uh, well done. It was one pa- to one. Yep. Uh, with 201 listens. Yeah. So we've raised about twice. Nice. Or four oh, times. That works. Four times. What was, do you know what our record was in season one? Mm, nah, well, I do. I can get it, but uh, oh, yeah, I don't well. know it off the bat. If we're going off cricket, which you would go when yes. you're raising the bat, yeah. we've raised it four times because 50, 100, 150. I mean, 200. that's good enough for me. Um, where do you reckon our second two most listened to country was? Scotland. Uh, not a world away. Uh, USA. Oh, how many <laughs> listens? Four. And this is where we get a bit interesting, right? Well, we'll go through <laughs> the other two countries. We had two listens in Taiwan, which I found interesting. Nice. And uh, one listen in Egypt and Brazil. Oh. Now, <laughs> this so how many, how many continents have we touched? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got to Antarctica yet, but we'll be sure to tick the the country of ice off soon. Um, this is where we get a bit interesting. All right, here we go. Richmond as a suburb. Yeah. Two two listens. <laughs> okay. Richardson, which is in <laughs> Texas, three listens. What? We reckon it's the same person. Just listen to it. He just loves it so much. I he sort of gave it three listens over. I hope it's one person that found it and he's told two other mates, Oh, you gotta listen Does to it, these two blokes. What registers a listen? Like if you just click on it and then go, oh, that's this good is enough shit, for me. Go off that's it. good enough oh, for me. Yeah, true. I mean, oh, you don't have to stay for the whole thing. In fact, turn off now if you're listening. Actually, we'll see in the rest of it's going to be garbage. Three, if we got more listens from Richardson, then oh. shout out to our fan in Richardson, Texas. Can you let us know? Can you please DM the Drivel Podcast and let it and make your voice heard? And for those in Egypt, Brazil, Taiwan, and the United States of America. I'll, Any I'll of our international them. listeners, please, oh. listeners, please let us know. And even our fellow countrymen in Australia, we'd like to know that you like us. <laughs> uh, we said last week that we're going to reel off uh, the comment of the week yep. this week. And uh, so we upload the video to YouTube at the Once Kind of Time channel and we would like to hear your best comment, please, chosen one. Well, we had an absolute plethora of choices from our 200 odd views. We had a whole mm. six comments. Oh, how, yeah. many, how many thumbs up? Uh, how many thumbs up did we get? Let me check. Oh, so there was... Zero thumbs down. <laughs> That's two weeks in a row. There's <laughs> zero thumbs down. And there was 21 thumbs up. You're kidding me. So I think last week well, we had about I, I, 25. I gave it a thumbs up. So did I, but that's okay. <laughs> so I think we're, at the moment we're looking at 46 thumbs up with zero th- thumbs down. Has there ever, I bet mm, you Joe Rogan... I'm, well, technically there's never been a better ratio ever. 100%. I bet you Joe Rogan has thumbs down. 100% he would. Um, um, but for the comment of the week, I'm going with... Regan Monaghan. Oh, Regzy. <laughs> he said, I'd be, su- I'd be surprised if this week doesn't reach the masses of the Democratic Republic of Congo. <laughs> oh, Elite chat. We've got, we <laughs> have got, that's where Yannick Balassi comes I'm from. Sure, I'm sure we'll be hitting there next. And um, I'm glad he thinks our, our podcast is worthy of a global scale. Dominican, De- what, how is, what was it? The Democratic Republic of Congo. I was Congo. about to say Dominican, isn't it? Dem- <laughs> the Dominican Republic. Yeah, that's yeah, the that's, country. That's a, that's a Congo, we have you in our sights. But uh, as for this week, I've got... Uh, and leave your best comment again this week and you'll get uh, you'll get a share. And the other five week. comments were great as well, but Fantastic. we only have enough time for one. <laughs> uh, I've got a surprise for you. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, it was my birthday a couple weeks ago. Yes, it was. And uh, my brother and my sister yep. got me a delayed present. Not as delayed as yours. Yours is coming, by the way. It's you, like, Michael told me after my birthday, <laughs> but I haven't got you a present, but I thought a ripper idea <laughs> would be to uh, give you a surprise at some point during the year. So, Is that not a ripper idea? Well, look, I, I've seen straight through your plan, but it's worked to a T because I'm sitting here going, oh, I can't wait for the surprise. <laughs> and it, I really didn't want to get you a present for the sake of getting you a, pre- getting you a present, and I couldn't think of anything. Trust me. Yeah, it's, it's coming. It, I, I, yeah, it's, com- it's coming, and it's going to be sick. I'm going to guess you're going to double down and get me two presents on my next birthday. That would be my... Uh, oh, that's a while away. Uh, I'll forget by then. Okay, so my brother and my sister have got me a delayed birthday present, mm-hmm. and it's a present for the both of us. Oh, sweet. <laughs> now... I uh, got a message from your brother. Boards. Yeah, it is hot. We're recording this in my garage and it is scorching it is outside. Day, it's daytime. Fucking hell, it is fucking hot. It just turns it into an absolute sauna. 
Um, anyway, go on. <laughs> yeah, as, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by your sweat. Uh, my brother and my sister got me a present, and a week before my birthday, my brother messaged me, and he said, mate, can you send me a JPG, which for those not in the uh, industry, yep. that's a photo. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, can you send me a photo of the Drivel logo art? Yep. So I sent him the photo, and my guess was that we were going to be receiving a big poster to put behind our can brick Can I guess wall. what it is? Uh, you can, but Maverick told me that he told oh, you what it is. It. <laughs> so we've got. Unfortunately, we can't we can't put them on now because it is absolutely scorching. Oh, no in way. Here. But we've been given two drivel, yes. uh, pink jumpers. Uh, but this is where it does get a bit fun. Okay, so we've got the logo on there, and we've got uh, some letters at the it's right below the logo. Mine has AOTV, oh, yeah. clearly representing <laughs> yeah. the admiral of the vessel, which is fan bloody tastic. <laughs> Maverick and Katrina didn't listen to episode of no, One of Dribble. they mustn't have. They didn't hear that you've gone, undergone a name change and you've gone from the cho- uh, the other guy to the chosen one. So, mate, I hate to inform you. No. You are still the other guy. You've got the other guy, Woody. Wear it loud and proud. Thanks, Maverick. Uh, uh, I owe you one. But we have got... Uh, I might make, make. I mean, for a birthday present for Connor, it's done me pretty well. I'm a, you will be on a, on a day where it isn't absolutely scorching as a sauna, you will be required to wear oh, the jumper yeah, despite... Just Bite oh. the other guy, uh, tag. I might have to, TOG might have to stand for something else. I'll think about it. Mm. Well, as it stands at the moment, I've gotten you technically a present when it isn't your birthday. Yep. You're still due me a well, present. Even Maverick though has, gave me one. Well, I mean, I, I've, gi- I've given you, he hasn't given, he gave me the birthday present and then I've given it to you. Mm, yep, uh, okay. And I think I also won our Christmas presents. We did a Christmas present. Mm. We did a Christmas present exchange. No, I don't know about that. Well, you got me a Crystal Palace jumper. That's an admiral on it. Which is the team I su- support in the Premier League. Don't get me wrong. Great hand, kick. Great handy kick. present. But, you know, is it the greatest T-shirt of all time? It's just, it's just, it's just <laughs> a soccer top. What did I get you? Uh, you got me a board game. Me, oh. me, just a massive fan of board games. Huge fan. And by that <laughs> I mean, I don't think I've ever played a board game. It wasn't just a board <laughs> game, Mick. You got to do me a bit more justice than that. Oh, I walked into Games go. World knowing that you just love board games. Yeah. Knowing that you huge are huge board games, man. You are on the admiral oh, of the vessel. You're eat the, sleep board game. The admiral of the board game world. And uh, I said, listen here. You've probably heard of him, Michael Allen, the chosen one. I'm sure he <laughs> comes in here all the time. I want to get him uh, the, the be- Michael Allen. Yeah, the the best board game you've got. Um, we're not talking Monopoly. He's already got that. He's, he's, he's got he's snake. Completed that. He's completed Monopoly. <laughs> he's clock snake and lighters, and don't even get me started on chess and checkers. And uh, someone piped up from the back of the store and said, oh, "You got to get him cat in." <laughs> I wonder if he was employed by the store. He just waits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the bloke working behind the counter goes, "Oh." You mean the board game of the century? <laughs> he pulls out Catan. It's a it's a game that uh, I'd never heard of it before in my life. It, it literally had written on the board on the game board game of the century. It had three main components: trade, build, and settle. Who who votes on this? Do you remember how we had that conversation about how every bakery has their the best meat pie in town? Yeah, is this just one of them where the, the Catan just? Said, I'm oh, surprised. It's you, probably the board game of the century. I'm surprised you don't. I thought you would have been on the panel, given how much you are infatuated <laughs> with the board game. Well, I thought you would have been the chairman and chief chief executive oh, officer. I must have missed the one where they did Catan. Uh, my one regret about getting you Catan is that it, I, I ante- anticipated us to play together and I realised it's a minimum three-player game. But, well, uh, we'll have to recruit someone. We'll get so the, the, maybe the next week the winning comment gets to play Catan with Roger and Mickey. <laughs> Trade, build and settle. We'll see you then. <laughs> Chosen one, I could not be any more excited about this. We are doing a first ever world exclusive Ooh, on Dribble. Yes, about time. This is something that has never been done before and it'll be tuned in by the masses for sure. I hope you're listening in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Correct. We're playing a game that has never been played before that I know mm, of. Okay, let's and, go. Okay, so how the game will work, and I'm not sure if this is going to be the greatest game of all time or the worst. Okay. Only one way to find out, Rog. People say the English language is the most difficult language to learn of them all because we have so many words that sound the same but mean different things. Oh, I've learned it and I'm fucking dumb as hell. We have three different theirs. Why do we have three theirs? And oh, yeah. And words that sound the same but are different. And Exactly this, right. Yeah. Thing with there is it's not like one's a regular word and two are quite obscure. Like, you know... You have time and time, like time the clock and yeah. time the garden. Room. That's not too bad because how many internationals need to know the word for time? True. But there, there, and there are all three of the most common yeah. words. It's spelled completely. And people different. who know English like proper still get them wrong uh-huh. every day. All of our mates in the group chat are <laughs> deplorable. Oh, I've got one wrong every now and then. <laughs> um, so how the game will work 
is I'm going to tell you, that, say, for example, it was time and time, and I'm going to play the word, me saying the word. Okay. And then you're going to have to guess which one it is. Okay. Now, I've plucked the word out of a sentence I've said. So I've recorded me saying a whole sentence. Yep. And then I've got a little soundbite of that one word. So say, for example, it was time. Yep. And I said, excuse me, sir, what's the time? And you're only going to hear time. And then you're going to guess which one it is. And you're going to get, and then I'll play what it actually is. Okay. Just let's, let's go with it. And then. Okay. The first uh, little English word that means two things is sauce, like tomato sauce. Yep. And, and like sauce, like can you change the HDMI sauce? Yep. I'm going to play you the word now and it's your job to tell me which sauce it is. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah, I have to, I have to say that you... I was playing our sound effects from last week. We'll go to our sound... <laughs> I was about to play the, the soccer coach guy with the rape thing last week. He said he's got robbed of a penalty. No, and no he, one needs to hear that all again. Right. Okay, are you ready? I am ready. Here we go. Sauce. <laughs> Do you want me to play it again? Yeah, can you play it one more time? Sauce. Is that like tomato sauce or is that like change the that HMI sauce? Is 100% tomato sauce. Let's find out. Yeah, get a share. Yeah, uh, I'll just grab the prawn crackers. Uh, half a dozen of your finest Jerry Springers, please. Sweet chili uh, with those ones. And I'll grab uh, the king prawn noodles, large, and I'll have them in the lemongrass sauce. Bang, bang, bang. We have a winner. That's it. You've guessed it easy, pretty. Easy work, mate. All right, we've got three of these, by the way. So oh, you're I'll one be, from one. I'll be three from three. You know your English language well. You can tell. Okay, the second one. Is um, air, right, like the air to the throne, or yep. air, like um, I can't breathe, I'm out the of air. air. is fucking hot as fuck in this garage. Yeah, correct. All right, here, listen closely. Air. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I knew what was going to happen, but it's still funny. Do you want to hear one more I would like to hear it again. Air. <laughs> I'm going to go with... The fucking air, like that. <laughs> the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The atmosphere, the oxygen, whatever okay. the fuck it is. Let's find out. The wind. Thank you all for coming here today. Uh, I know you've all heard the news, but just to reiterate, this morning, unfortunately, at 9.53pm, the beautiful Queen Elizabeth, oh. unfortunately, carked it. She is dead. Uh, she will be living no longer. And the question that is on the tip of everyone's tongue is who is next? Who is our next queen or king? Who will be the rightful... Oh, who let one of those rip? That is... Oh, that is gnarly. Can someone open up a window? I need some fresh air in here. Fuck me. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. You oh. were you were certain you were on for a loss there. <laughs> oh, now 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 the pressure's on. You are red hot. Okay. Two from two. That is that is absolutely fantastic. Oh, right, let's go. Okay, the, the third <laughs> the third one. All right. Pause and pause. Like pause the TV or the dog has pause. Yeah, okay. Are you ready to hear it? <laughs> yeah. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like Can to I get that one more time, please? Yeah. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. oh, fuck, the pressure's on. The pressure is on. Now, <laughs> dog pause, dog pause, dog there pause. There we go. What was that, honey? Oh, no. <laughs> what? I can't hear. Hang on, hang on, hang on, oh, no. hang on. I'm just watching this documentary on dog's feet. I'll just pause it. Oh, no. oh it was it was getting impressive. I knew it was as soon as the dog was gonna be wrong. Oh, I'm glad <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you got air air and air, right? <laughs> Two from three and let's hope we get some fresh air in this fucking garage because it, it is, is steaming. Stinking. I was actually planning on having a week or two off from this segment, uh, Chosen One. Oh, this isn't everyone's favourite segment, Everyone's favourite segment. It's time for... I'm telling you, Mick, she wants to be all aboard the Filipino dreamboat. Ew, why would I ever shag Rod? Only three things in life are certain. Death, taxes, and me shagging this Sheila. Rod thought he had a chance with me? Gross. You can mark it in your footy record already, Mick. It is as good as done. I quite simply do not miss from here. Would you believe that Rog thought he had a chance with me? That's repulsive. That is repulsive. <laughs> <laughs> I um, actually did want to have a couple of weeks off. Just because when we're only pumping out one episode a week, 
to have the same segment every single week so <laughs> seemed yeah. a little bit strenuous. But something's happened during the week that... Uh, this is a must-do segment. Yeah, that quite simply cannot be ignored. All right, I'm Cannot be it. pushed to the side. And you are no longer taking part in this game for the foreseeable future. No. You're, you're not just a chance, you're a certainty for a prolonged period yes, of time. I am. So hats off to lucky you. Lucky me, lucky me. Hats off to you, Mr. Uh, Chosen One, formerly Mr. Other Guy. Thank you. Um... Now, if, you keep, if you've been keeping up with the show, if you've been listening each week, you'll know that uh, I've got a birthday shag. Yep. Well done to me. Have I got the right one here? Awesome. That's what the whole show's about. No, that's not it. That's it. Woo! Woo! Rick Blair, baby. I almost played the footy show segment for a <laughs> second. Um, got a birthday shag, right? And then uh, I said to you at the end, will I be a chance of going for a round number due for the Italians out there? I backed it in, didn't I? You did. Uh, after I said to her uh, the first time, I thought it'd be a funny gag directly uh, after we shag yeah, yeah. to come up with the most random questions. So I jumped off there and I said, are you close with your cousins? <laughs> she was a bit confused. We all find the funny side now. And she found the funny side to the point where she invited me over for a round number two. Ah, woo! 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 That's what we like to hear. Now that alone wouldn't be wouldn't be worthy of probably coming back for another episode. May uh, as well mention it just for anyone listening. Connor's a bit of a star. Yeah, that's actually the end of our Am I a Chance? <laughs> Catch us uh, next week. No, so she rocked up to trivia by herself. So she Ooh. came alone. Mo- uh, single Molly wasn't there. If you've been, oh, ki- that's a shame. Um, but uh, this lady did come, and I've gone back to her place. She lives. She did come. Town. <laughs> For a world, a Connor Rogers exclusive um, No, and I went back to uh, her place and, and an incident occurred An incident An incident So uh, we'd, been, uh, we'd been rolling around in the streets uh, As you do We finished up Yes And she noticed I'm going to just put a warning out there now If you're, uh, <laughs> if you're, not, if you're not down for you know, quite sensual content Quite out there and upfront and honest uh, conversation It's probably best You, you pause the podcast <laughs> Welcome now. to Drivel <laughs> Welcome to Drivel um, She noticed that uh, Her vagina Was just a little bit puffy Like almost Almost like stung by a bee Right? <laughs> yeah okay. like, And she said It's first time it's ever happened to her And I said I've never You know In, in the <laughs> in the two other times I've had intercourse This has never happened <laughs> She's uh, not allergic To the old Rog is she? I thought Is she allergic to my doodle? <laughs> what uh, What <laughs> is it? The first girl that comes back <laughs> Yeah Now it wasn't um, It wasn't you know We're not ringing the alarm bells We're not Going to hospital, we're not calling the ambulance. We're oh, not, mate, it's just a bit of a puffy vagina <laughs> <laughs> for fuck's Go sake. On, Go on, <laughs> sleep on it. I'm sure it'll be brand new in the morning. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but it was a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit concerning. What, what, so you didn't what, notice at all? Did you notice? Well, I didn't notice. I thought we were just, I thought she just had a little bit of puffy, <laughs> a natural puffy. We all have a bit of natural, natural puffy from time to time. Um, and then we started having a brainstorm. What could this possibly be? Is it, you know, <laughs> is there a lot of pollen in the air and a bit of hay fever yeah. in the, down there or something like that? Roger been sticking his dick in grass and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I realised is, um, and this is only a theory. It's not a proven theory. We didn't take the DNA to yeah, science. Yeah, I got a feeling it might be a theory. Is that, uh, like I said, she came to trivia. And one of the games in trivia yeah. is called Sink or Swim. Do you remember this game? You've come. Yes. So I get a big jug of I water. Have come. Yeah, <laughs> I get a big jug, jug of water and each week I put a different item of food in the water. For example, it could be a can of tuna, a banana, what whatever. What did we do? A bottle of hot sauce when we were there? Yeah, you did a bottle of sriracha. So, and it's the, your audience's job to write down on the answer sheet, is it going to sink in the water or is it going to swim? Great game. This week, uh, well, the, the week that this incident happened, it was curry. It was Mac. <laughs> yeah, it was curry powder. So I put uh, the tin of curry powder in the water, uh, took the curry, pu- uh, and it was everyone's job to guess if it's sink, sink or swim. It, in fact, sink, uh, swim. Yeah, okay, yeah. Interesting. But on the out- way out, I uh, may have accidentally uh, uh-huh. dropped the curry powder. Yep, so on the floor. Well, not on the floor, just a little bit on the table. Oh, Nothing yeah. major, but yeah. I had to clean it up. I wiped it with my hands. <laughs> so the accepted theory. Keep in mind the big bang. The big bang is the accepted theory of how the universe started. The, the scientists back it to be true, but it's not proven. We yeah, weren't there. No one was down there. Now this is in hardcore fact, but the accepted <laughs> theory is that I still had remnants of curry powder on my fingers, and when they ventured down to uh, to the promised land, it may have interfered with. Uh, was it so? Was it spicy curry powder? Well, it was curry powder, mate. Is there a such thing as non-spicy what, isn't curry there powder? Mild curry powder? No. What's a, what a what's a mild curry powder? Oh, well, I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's a thing. So then the question was going to be: After I've inflamed her vagina with curry powder, for this, <laughs> do you think I'm still a chance? Um, well, you said you're just talking about it heaps and like it went all right. And if she's willing to take curry powder fingers, yeah. she's probably willing to take anything. So I reckon you are a chance. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm not just a chance we did in fact go back again. Oh, it's two for two for me. But the plot thickens. Oh, no. You wouldn't think after the... Are you close with your cousins? And then after the curry powder finger incident... Curry powder gate. Curry powder gate. <laughs> that it could get a whole lot worse from there. No. <laughs> now, if you're not into gory content, turn off now. If you're oh, not... If you don't, if, you don't, if you don't like horror, turn off. <laughs> So we're having what I would consider to be very standard, non, um, n- you know, not noteworthy intercourse. Missionary. Yep. Not oh, it's got me written all over. Yeah. <laughs> um, nothing too major. The at, big three? Did you, did you, did you doing the big three? Well, at the time we were just doing the big one. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it worked. And the yeah, the pace was the pace wasn't lightning. It wasn't exactly too aggressive. It was just a very we we're building up to something better. But this is you know we we're, we were easing into it. It was nothing extraordinary. <laughs> I glance down, and once again, I do remind you to turn down if you if you turn off if you're um, not a big fan of Oh, no. Glance down, and there is a lot of blood. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there is. And we're not talking, you know, like you cut your finger and there's a little... We're like, oh, we're talking like the Crimson Mask Ric Flair. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking maple syrup consistency, really. It was, oh, are we? Yeah. <laughs> it was rather thick. Because as you can... So, I thought it was her. It maple happened. syrup consistency. Oh, well, I thought it was her. You know, that happens sometimes. It went, You know, yeah. the, your time of the month might come a bit soon or especially you know if you haven't done it for a while something that can be the occasional oh if you're like Rog and just got a massive parsnip and correct and I pull I pull out and go oh well are you bleeding no big deal um, we'll clean that up pull out turns out <laughs> it wasn't her that was bleeding oh what it was me <laughs> my banjo snapped oh no have you have you heard about I've this I've heard about that but no yeah definitely never succumbed to it I can't believe they don't teach this in sex ed right now the only reason I know that the banjo snapped for, so for those that don't know what the it banjo it sounds horrible well for those that don't know what it is is the uh, uh, the underside of your penis Towards the head, there is a bit of connective tissue. I'm not sure what it's connecting your penis to. It might be the foreskin. It might be, I don't know. Oh, what. yeah, it's just there, I think. Connect something. It's almost a like a, a really tight sort of bungee cord, right? <laughs> and, a uh, banjo string. <laughs> a ba- it's like, a, it's, that's exactly what it is. A banjo <laughs> string, right? And occasionally during intercourse, mm-hmm. um, you can get unlucky and that can snap. And there's a lot of blood in Fuck involved. sake. Now, once again, I reiterate that I've had wilder, more intense sort of sex and what we were probably building to something better, yeah. but we were right at the beginning of the story and the banjo snap. Now, the only reason I knew that this was a thing is because uh, me cousin, it's happened to him multiple times. At one, really? Oh, at one stage, he was getting called Banjo Patterson because it was like <laughs> three or four times it happened to him and I ring him straight away. So, I, blood everywhere, I've got him what on What do the I phone. do? What do I do? Yeah. How do I restring my banjo? Exactly right. <laughs> what do I do? And uh, he said, don't panic. <laughs> it happens. Jump in the shower, and he go. He said to me, "How much does it hurt?" Like, oh, it's agony in it. And I've said, to be honest, I'm feeling no pain at all, no discomfort. I was at like a, a zero out of ten pain. I felt normal. I just happened to be bleeding. Didn't even notice. Didn't even notice. So I jump in the shower, and I notice it wasn't a complete tear. It's not like someone's got scissors and cut the Fuck banjo it cord. <laughs> it's more like someone's got a knife and gently like made an incision. Oh, yeah, that's right. Made an incision <laughs> into the cord. And I said to Coop, hey, what does this mean? What do oh, I do? I get, do you get surgery to restring the banjo? <laughs> What's a go here? And he said, uh, no, nah, you have to be, you can't masturbate <gasps> or share <gasps> for six weeks. Oh, what? I can't toss off. I can go without shagging for six weeks. I've gone a lot longer. Don't you <laughs> yeah, worry about that. No, don't worry about don't that. Worry about that. <laughs> I can't. Jerk myself off for a whole six. Is that week. diagnosed by cousin? Well, Did you search he it up at all? said all the articles, and then I had to read myself. Yep. Say four to five, but like a hamstring tear, if you come back too early, the next time you tear it, not only are you going to tear it quickly, you're going to tear it just worse. Just give it six, yeah. So he said that he came back after four weeks, <laughs> thinking that that's yeah. okay, uh, and he tore it even worse, and there was even more blood the second oh, time around. So I never want this to happen to me ever. Well, I can't this believe horrible. I can't believe it happened to bloody. I wonder me. what the like. Why is it wear and tear? Maybe it was just due. It like everyone's banjo is just due to snap. It couldn't have been wear and tear. But interestingly enough, I was talking to a lass uh, shortly after because I was a little bit concerned about. Not concerned. I was just curious as yeah. to what's happened here. I was talking to a lass after. I'd be fucking concerned. And she said she slept with eleven blokes, and it's happened to three of them. Oh. Three out of eleven is a high ratio. Yeah, I think. that's not great odds. I would have thought it's. Very minimal. Well, three out of 11 sort of it suggests that uh, it's more common than what we know. Maybe it happens to people that don't talk to Well, yeah, I've, oh, I've never heard of it. Um, 
like through first hand. Like only you just told me your cousin. That's the only one I know. Yeah, there you go. Well, uh, maybe, maybe it's just course. maybe it's just genetic. It runs in my DNA, and the two uh, the three other people that girl was talking about <laughs> was me dad and me brother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is probably as intelligent and insightful as the drivel podcast is likely to ever go mick oh here we go i'm I think excited i've already <laughs> told you a bit about it but i read a book uh called the alter ego effect okay and what the book details is how if you become if you create a character mm-hmm. and you pretend to be that character yep uh you can actually become a better person oh, yeah, sure. yourself. Yeah, told me a bit about this yes yes so yes. um to give you a bit of a, um, a better example of what i mean by that like uh, using a character to improve your own deficiencies is martin luther king jr okay. what, a, what a champion yeah he, he, i've heard he's done good things did plenty for the world from all reports did heaps for the stand black up, community yeah stand up bloke uh, he actually wasn't too confident of, an, of a public speaker, believe it or not. Oh, really? Um, so what he would do, he, he would wear... Gl- a, he did pretty well for yeah. someone who's not too confident. <laughs> Imagine if he was confident. Yeah, I know. He wore glasses during his rallies and his speeches, even though the fact he didn't, didn't need... He had perfect vision. Ah. He, had in, he might have even <laughs> had enhanced vision. He might not have, <laughs> but he might have. And uh, he would wear the glasses because when he put these smart glasses on, he yep. felt like a leader of men. He felt like someone that was confident. That, and oh, a bit of a placebo effect. Exactly right. Um, Magic glasses. Another example of the alter ego effect is the Queen Bee Beyonce. <laughs> yes, I've heard this one. Uh, she, for those that don't know, um, was just a church girl growing up, uh, wasn't capable of being a pop star, shaking her ass up on the stage. So she created a stage name called Sasha Fears. So before she goes out on stage, she channel her Sasha Fears, go out, shake her ass and beyond something Beyonce what could... What a champion, what a hero. Something Beyonce <laughs> could never do, Sasha Fears did. And then eventually they, the two people sort of merged and she just became... And she can just do it herself. She just became an improved version of herself. And it makes a lot of sense. Like um, essentially that's what growing up is, is pretending to be something you want to be and then... Eventually, you you do that enough, and you that's who you become. I don't remember but wanting pretending to be a famous fucking podcast star. And he, well, I did. Here I am. That's exactly <laughs> what I grew up pretending to be. Um, so I thought, why limit it to smart glasses? Why have it as just you put on a pair of glasses and they're, they're going crazy at the moment? The blue light glasses. Oh, like yeah. People wear them at uni. They chuck them on. You, you go on, don't you? Well, I've managed to buy myself a pair. So the re- I'll just pull them out my bag here. Yep. The reason why I got them was because I'm going back to university and yep. I wanted to just feel a bit smarter. <laughs> so I want you to throw a situation at me. It doesn't have to be uni. It could be any walk of life um, where you think I might be required to use a fra- even a little bit of intelligence. Jeez. Oh, All right. Let me... Oh. <laughs> let's, say, let, let's say, for example, um, if I had to get an exam in on time and you're the lecturer and uh, you say, you know, you, you're the lecturer and you need me to get this exam done. Oh well, I need you to get it done. Well, it's gonna it's gonna be required a time limit, so you oh, gotta get it done within a week. But mate. I'm I'm such and a so so you're, so you're so far behind, aren't you? I'm such a procrastinator. I could never get this done. Not Connor Rogers. I could never do it. Hang on, let me put on these glasses. <laughs> ho ho! Here I am. T- oh. Type it away, Roger. He's getting the exam done. He's got he's got an A plus, right? It's like reverse Clark Kent. Now, don't get me wrong. That's that that works beautifully, yeah, right? right? There, there I am. I put the glasses on. Are they really that good? And they work that well. <laughs> I've just gone from being a procrastinator that can't get it done to all of a sudden I'm making my absolutely exam. throwing the lecturer. But why stop there? <laughs> <laughs> why? Sp- Please be the same pair of glasses. <laughs> Why not pull out the Macho Man oh, glasses, right? God. So, as we know, the Macho Man, Randy Savage. Oh, I, I can do a scenario for this. <laughs> well, no, give me, give me the same scenario. Oh, the same scenario. Yeah, right. So you, right. you got, you really got to get this paper okay. in. It's well, due in a week, mate, and I haven't seen you done much work. Oh, but I, I can't. Oh, I'll pro- procrastinate, Roger. No, I know. I'm pro- I will never get it done. Hang on one second. Let me throw on my Macho <laughs> Man glasses. Oh yeah, <laughs> you think the Macho Man is gonna do your exam? I'm not gonna touch the exam. I'm gonna. Drop the elbow on you, <laughs> Professor, because I am the, the much, the much, the macho madness. No, you definitely got to get the paper in, though. <laughs> <laughs> throw me one more. Throw me, you know, maybe. Um, what does it have to be? Uh, smart. Any, any walk of life. Any All walk right. Life. Well, uh, and, and you can pick. This is, can be a choose your own adventure. Do you want normal Rog, uh, smart Rog, or macho man Rog? Uh, you can pick which Rog you need. Okay, depending, depending on the situation. Oh, no, Roger, I know you've been. I know you said you can do it, but that's a hundred kilos. You can't bench a hundred kilos, mate. Oh <laughs> yeah, you think 
the macho man can't bench press 100 <laughs> kilos. The macho man could bench press your mother, and she weighs much more oh, than 100 oh, what? kilos. What? Get them on. Get them on instead. Bench press, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Chosen one, mm-hmm. there is every chance I will not be sitting episode, uh, episode. There is every chance I won't be sitting opposite you for episode four of Drivel. Mm, I don't know how that's going to work. I may be implicated to a prison sentence. Hey, uh, that's exciting. And it has to do with uh, kidnapping. Oh, wow. You haven't told me about this yet. No, um, I thought I'd tell the people, and I want to get this on the record because I think this could actually help me in a court of law. Now, I am firmly in the belief that there are parents right now that think I was trying to kidnap their little daughter. Oh, dear me. And have I shit myself? Oh, no. So, I'm driving home. uh, (laughs) Oh, no. I'm driving home from a restaurant the other night. Yeah. It's getting towards night time. It's not pitched black yet, but the sun is definitely in setting, in setting mode. Uh, driving past the Greensboro College, driving past the high school, and yep. I see a little girl off her bike. She's laying next to her bike. Okay. To the naked eye, it looks like she's fallen off. Oh, ah, yeah, fair enough. So I'm driving past, and I think, uh, oh, Hero Rog. Hero Rog, I'll, I'll help this little girl yep. off her bike. So I slow down. So I'm going at about 60. I slow down to about 20, driving very slowly. And yep. at this stage, I'm not even sure if she's fallen off. So I'm driving to sort of analyze. Just analy- checking, just checking. I want to analyze and make sure she's okay. Yep. So I'm starting to wind down the window down. I'm about to yell out, Hey, are you, are you okay? Have yep. you fallen off? Yep. You, you in pain? Winding my window down. Keep in mind, I have the filthiest mustache you've ever seen. Yeah, no, I was thinking that. <laughs> Wind the mustache down, and two and the two parents come walking from around the corner. Yep. And this is when I've realised this doesn't look good. This is when I realise. Oh no! I have a feeling you might make it worse. I've got the mustache. I've got the window down. The little girls there. I've slowed down as well. Her. I've slowed down. I've looked at them and I've sort of now I look, have a look of panic and I just accelerate. Oh, I, Rog. I, I accelerate oh, to about 60 Rog. and I just keep driving thinking, fuck, fuck, fuck. Because I didn't, I didn't want to go to them. I thought she fell off the bike because then it ne- I thought that could maybe make me look. No, like I think that's, that's better. Shit. If she's lying down next to a bike on the side of the fucking road, I think you get a pass for going, hey, you're all right. At the same time, I thought if I just drive off at about a million miles an hour, <laughs> maybe they won't see me number plate, they won't see me face and I could get away with it. But uh, I'm fully, I want to get on the record now <laughs> that if you guys are avid listeners of Drivel. No intentions of kidnapping. If you are the two, if you are the couple and your daughter are the three people that are listening to the podcast <laughs> from Richardson, Texas, and you happen to be here, hear me now. I was not trying to kidnap and... Uh, do bad things to you. Oh, I'll be your character judge and say, oh, I don't know if I can trust your character. Just quickly before we wrap up, um, considering this is quite possibly the last episode of Drivel e- yeah. ever before I go to prison. Let's hope not. Um, I ha- I For found, the sake of the people. I found an unbelievable life hack during the week. All right. Um, and this is something that I think everyone could find in handy. You know how uh, everyone gets very frustrated at the way Bakery is charged 20 cents for sauce now. Yes. You've got to pay for your yes. little budget. Is that 20 cents now? I remember, I thought 15 cents was the... Uh, it might be. I don't know. I never pay for it. And I'll tell you why I never pay for it. Because I've created a, a hack. Thief. Well, not and a, a ki- thief. And a kidnapper. Not a thief. <laughs> <laughs> not a thief. But yes, a kidnapper. Now, I went into the bakery um, and I got myself a vegetable pasty. Yep. And I wanted the sauce. And I did this by accident originally. It, uh, but now I've realised that this is a tactic that can be used all the time. Get the pasty, and she goes, would you like sauce with that? Yeah. And I say, nah, I'm right, I don't need the sauce. I tap my card. Ah. Then immediately I went, oh, actually, I would like the sauce. Do you want to charge the 20 cents on the card? Clearly I've paid by card, means I don't have yeah. cash. Yeah. And they go, oh, you know, don't worry about it, just have the sauce. Uh, great tactic, which I'm very familiar with in a different setting. Oh, what's Me your setting? working as an IGA bat, fucking register boy. Yeah. People will often go, oh, I'm like, do you need a bag for that? 15 cents for a bag. They go, no, no, it's all right, it's all right. And then after they pay for everything, oh, and they go, yeah. actually, I think I'll need a bag. Yeah. Okay, all right, just take it. I'm yeah. not going <laughs> to yeah. charge you 15 cents I'm not going to put a, a card through for that. The, the last little life hack before we give it, give it, this isn't a hack. This is just a bit of, in the same way that we informed you that it is possible for people's penis to break during sex, resulting yep. in an unbelievable amount of maple syrup blood. Please never let that happen to me. Um, the, the, there is a, a large array of what I can only assume to be men out there, right, that, let me give it a bit of context. I, I know a couple that showered together not long ago. Yep. And the female started soaping her body, yep. including her, her exit hole, her asshole. Yep, okay. And the guy was confused, like, what are you doing washing your asshole? And she's like, what do you mean? I'm, I'm in the shower. You, if there's one place you should wash out of your whole body... Clean, quite possibly your asshole. Cleanse, cleanse the backside, and he was, he said, "I've never cleaned me up. He's never just soaped his soaped his. Do you soap your bum? 
I have. Yeah, you got to yeah. you got to save it from time to time. Yeah, you got to clean it. That's just so we've got a life hack and just a life lesson. If you <laughs> you're not saving your bum hole, yeah. you're doing it wrong. Yeah, you're <laughs> and on that note, that is dribble. It's the admiral of the vessel and the other guy. Ass